Welcome to the Bada video lecture. In this lecture, I'll explain the APIs and framework provided in Bada for developing location-based application. First, I'm going to explain namespaces related to applications. Location-based services in Bada are divided into three categories, namely locations, location services, and location controls. Let's dig into these namespaces to get a more detailed picture. We'll discuss the location namespace and focus mainly on location-based services, such as the location provider and remote location provider classes, which provide the methods to achieve use cases, such as where am I or where is my friend, the landmark, landmark store, and remote landmark store classes provide the methods to find interesting places nearby and store a database of points of interest on the device and servers. Location services provide services such as maps, geocoding, routing, and directory, and the location control which allows users to control the map more easily. I'll start with the location's namespace. As discussed, the location's namespace can best be explained using important classes such as the location provider, the remote location provider, and landmarks. Landmarks support both device landmark store and remote landmark store. Let's discuss the location provider. The location provider class will give the location of the device and is implemented using GPS and Wi-Fi. Location updates are required based on a periodic or distant space. The iLocation listener interface provides a listener that receives events associated with a particular location provider. In order to use the location provider APIs, we need to include the privileges of the location in the manifest file. The location class provides following location-related information, such as qualified coordinates, course, speed, time stamp, a location method such as GPS, WPS, or hybrid, and the satellite info. Now, let's look at how to get the location updates periodically. For location updates, the registry function you need to use is Request Location Updates. For each time interval mentioned in the registry function, the onLocationUpdated listener function will be called. On an application moving to the background or when location updates are not required, the Cancel Location Updates API can be called to cancel the location updates, which saves battery life. On returning the application to the foreground, you need to re-register for the location updates using the Request Location Updates API. On the application Termination, listening to location updates can be canceled using the Cancel Location Updates method. Next, let's look at how area monitoring can be achieved. Area monitoring is nothing but getting a notification when a specified boundary is crossed. To monitor the area, the Add Area Listener method is used for registering with the listener. When the device crosses the boundary, the On Boundary Crossed callback is invoked. The point to be noted here is if you received the On Boundary Crossed event, the listener registration is automatically canceled, and if you want to receive it again, you need to re register the listener. On termination, the listener can be removed with the Remove Area Listener method. Now, I'll explain the location information on request. The location information can be retrieved by an application request instead of periodic updates. Since it returns the last recorded location, you must check the timestamp and other fields to determine if this information is recent enough for the application to use without creating a new request for obtaining the current location. The getLastKnownLocationN method 
has two overloaded variations. One will get the last known recorded location regardless of the location method, and the other one gets the last known location recorded using the specified location method. Now, let's look at what a landmark is. A landmark is a known location with a name, also called a point of interest, or POI. Landmark Store is a container of landmarks which will support searching for landmarks by name, category, or bounding box. The privilege needed for landmarks is Landmark. Now, let's look at the Landmark class. A named landmark mainly consists of a textual description, coordinates, address, time stamp of the last change, the geographical area covered, author, and URLs for additional content. Let's look at the different functions supported in the Landmark class. By using the Landmark class methods, you can get or set data such as the address info, author, description, extra info, geographic area, name, qualified coordinates, and URL. In addition to this, there are methods to get the landmark ID, landmark store name, and timestamp. The landmark class has three constructors which can be used based on convenience. The options are you can duplicate a landmark, create a landmark with a name, or create an empty landmark and fill in the details later. As discussed earlier, a landmark store is a set of landmarks. There are two types of landmark stores, private, which are only visible to the creator, and public, which are visible to any application. In the public type, the creator has full access to the landmark store and others can only retrieve the values. Now, let's look at a sample code snippet of how to create the public landmark store. In this sample, I've created the landmark store with the store name. The second parameter of the Create Landmark Store API states whether it's public or not, that it's true for public and false for private. Then, I use the construct method to initialize the landmark store. Next, we'll see how we can add a landmark to the landmark store. Here, I've used the landmark constructor which takes the name as the input parameter. Then, I prepared a coordinates object and set it to the landmark using the set qualified coordinate API. Finally, I added the landmark to the landmark store using the add landmark API with the landmark instance and category as parameters. Now, let's look at how to search for a landmark by giving the latitude and longitude values. In order to get alerts for search results, a listener is required, so I've created this first. While searching for the landmark, interesting landmark properties can be enabled using Landmark Property Selector. Here, I've enabled the address info and description. Then, the Search Landmarks API is called with the listener, latitude, longitude, and landmark property selector parameters. Coming to the listener class, the listener for the search result is my listener in our sample code. The my listener class mainly contains one method, on landmark search result received n, which is the callback for the search results of the landmark. Now, let's look at how we can implement this method to retrieve the search result of the landmarks. The resulting landmarks, if any, will be available as the I enumerator pointer in this method. We can iterate through the enumerator, typecast each item as a landmark, and read the values. Next, let's look at how we can search for a landmark by name. The implementation is as simple as giving the category to be searched, the name of the landmark to search for, the property selector, and the listener to the Search Landmarks API. In the place of the name, if null is passed, 
all the landmarks in the specified category will be retrieved. Also, landmarks can be searched for using different filters depending on the requirements. Filters will filter the resultant landmarks and show only those landmarks. In this example, let's look at how to search for a landmark with the filter category food underscore and underscore beverage within a range of 100 meters from the current location. First, get the current location using the Get Last Known Location N API and retrieve the coordinates. Then set Circle Geographic Area to 100 meters from these coordinates. The filter category can be set using the Set Category with the category name as the input parameter and the area filter can be added using Set Geographic Area Filter with the area as the input parameter. Now, let's search for the landmark with the filter, selector, sorting order, sort category parameters, and the listener. Now that we've seen how to create and search for landmarks, let's look at how we can remove or update a landmark. In this example, I'm going to try and update the description of the landmark. For that, I've first retrieved the landmark instance. Then, I've updated the description using the Set Description API. Then, I called the Update Landmark API of the Landmark Store with the landmark as the parameter. The landmark can be deleted from a landmark store using the Delete Landmark API with the landmark instance as the parameter. That's all for the first namespace locations. Now, let's move on to the next namespace location services. Location services provide location-based services such as geocoding, routing, and directory searches. The privilege required for using location services APIs is called location underscore service. The geocoding service helps to convert street addresses into coordinates and vice versa. The routing service allows your application to determine the route between two locations and implement navigation features. The directory service allows applications to perform geographically constrained searches for any data, such as places, products, and services. Decarta is the default service provider used in Bada. For developing any applications related to location services, it's necessary to register on the Decarta site and get credentials to use the service. The provider manager is the starting point for any location service. To use the services of the service provider, you need to connect to it using the Connect to Service Provider N API, giving the credentials collected from the service provider. From BADA SDK 2.0 version and onwards, the first parameter of the Connect to Service Provider API can be an empty string. If an empty string or the default underscore service underscore provider is passed as the first parameter, this method returns the default service provider for the requested service type. The different service provider types supported are map service, route service, the geocode service, and direction. If you want to check the capabilities of the service provider, you can use the Get Service Provider Capabilities N API. Now, let's discuss the geocoding services. In the geocoding service, the location is represented as address and geographic coordinates. The address is the location represented in human understandable format with the country, state, city, etc. And the geographic coordinates consists of the latitude, longitude, and altitude of the location. This is used for mapping a location into a map or getting a location from the GPS. 
The main functionality of this service is geocoding and reverse geocoding. In geocoding, the address is converted to the coordinates of the location to which the address corresponds to. And in reverse geocoding, the reverse happens, i.e., the coordinates are converted to the address corresponding to the location represented by the coordinates. Let's look at the important classes and interfaces which contribute in providing the geocoding service. The first and most important interface is iGeocoding Service Provider. This interface helps applications to request geocoding and reverse geocoding related services from the service provider. To convert an address to coordinates, i.e. to geocode, we can use the geocode API. You can pass the address info as the main parameter to this API to get the coordinates corresponding to a location. There's also an overloaded method to geocode which will take the free form address or partial address as the main parameter and get you the coordinates of the location. To do the reverse, for example, converting from the coordinates to an address can be done with the Reverse Geocode API. Both the Geocode and Reverse Geocode APIs are asynchronous, and to receive the result, you need to implement the I Geocoding Service Listener. To cancel the requests, you can use the Cancel Request API. Let's look at the address field used in geocoding. At least one of the following address fields is mandatory for geocoding. The street name, street intersection, i.e. crossing 1, crossing 2, postal code, state, country, city, or district. The street number is optional. While requesting geocode or reverse geocode, you can set the preferences related to a geocoding service provider. The geocoding service Preferences class is used to capture this. These preferences include controlling the number of matches and exact matches. The geocoding service provider may find several coordinates for a given address. The application can tell the maximum number of geocoded results by setting the maximum number of matches. The Set Max Matches Count API is used with the maximum matches as the input parameters. The application may want to get only one set of coordinates which exactly match the given address. This can be done by setting the exact match preference as true. The Set Exact Match API is used for this purpose. The base country code can be set using the Set Base Country Code API. This will be the country code used by the given geocoder. As we discussed earlier, we need to implement iGeocoding Service Listener to receive the result of geocoding or reverse geocoding. This listener provides a callback mechanism for the geocoding service providers to send information about the service request to the applications. We can implement this interface in our applications and register it in a service request to the service provider represented by iGeocoding Service Provider to obtain information from it. There are two methods in this listener which are on geocoding request result received n and on reverse geocoding Request Result Received N. On Geocoding Request Result Received N is called by the geocoding service provider when the result of the geocoding request has been received. And for the reverse geocoding request, the service provider will call on reverse geocoding request result received N when the result of the request has been received. Now, let's look at an example of using the geocode for the better understanding 
of the geocoding services. First, connect to the service provider using the Connect to Service Provider N API, which returns the provider object. With the provider object, call the geocode method with the address to geocode and pass the listener. The main point to be remembered about the geocode is that the country code should be set corresponding to the address to be geocoded. If not, even if the country name is mentioned in the address, it will be ignored. If the country code is not set, the result will be wrong or no result. Now, let's look at the declaration of the I Geocoding Service Listener class. On Geocoding Request Result Received N is the listener that gets triggered by the geocode, and On Reverse Geocoding Request Result Received N is the listener for the reverse geocode. The result values can be retrieved as the output parameters in the listener methods. As discussed, the on geocoding request result received n callback will be triggered when the geocoding service providers send information about the result of the service request to applications. It's the application's responsibility to show or use the obtained results. The result received will be a list of landmarks. You can iterate through the list, get each landmark, and use the coordinates as shown in the example. The on reverse geocoding request result received N API can also be implemented in a similar way. The result you'll need to retrieve there will be the address for the requested location. Now let's check the directory services. The directory service is provided through a location service provider and allows applications to perform geographically constrained searches for any data, such as places, products, and services. This service is about finding something somewhere. Here, something means some human-readable ID, such as a name, category, or keyword, and somewhere can be an address or a geographical area. For example, Find a cafe within 500 meters of my hotel. The result of this search will be landmarks. Let's check the important classes and interfaces for the directory service. iDirectory Service Provider is the main interface for this service and it represents the directory service provider. This interface accesses the services offered by the directory service provider. The main APIs are Search, Get Filter N, and Cancel Request. Search is the main API and is asynchronous. We have to implement the listener and pass it to this API to get the result of the search. Other main parameters are the directory filter, which contains the keyword, category, etc. Then a local filter such as a geographical area, or address, etc., and the preferences for the search. Based on the local filter, the search has four overloaded variations. These are a search without any local filter, a search with an address filter, a search with a geographic area filter, and a search with a free-form address filter. A search can be canceled with the Cancel Request API. To get the filter for the directory service provider, we can use the Get Filter N API. The Directory Service Preference class is used to specify the preferences for the directory service provider. The preferences include the controlling options for the number of results and sorting. The provider will have a default value for the maximum number of search results that can be given in response to a search request. We can change this value using the Set Max Result Count API. 
To get a sorted result, you can set the sort order and criteria using the Set Sort By and Set Sort Order APIs. iDirectory Service Listener is the listener used in the directory service. To obtain search results from the service provider, applications implement this interface and register it in the service request, i.e., search in the iDirectory service provider. The only method we have in this interface is on directory request result received n. This method will be called by the directory service provider when the result of a search request has been received. Let's look at the sample code for searching for a coffee shop on the map using the directory services. The basic code is the same for connecting to the server. Then, let's create a directory filter instance. The filter can be added using the Add Filter API and search using the keyword coffee. The search API is called with the filter instance, the geographical area where the result is required, the listener, and the request ID. The listener triggered for the directory search is on directory request result received n and data can be retrieved by type casting the directory search result data will be obtained as an output parameter in the listener the other operations like showing or using the values will be controlled by the application this is all about the directory services next we'll look at the route service the route service allows your application to determine the route between two locations, determine the route through multiple waypoints, and implement navigation features. You can use this service to display a route on a map. The route service is available with the support of the route service provider. Route requests consist of waypoints for the route and preferences, such as areas to be avoided, features to be avoided, and the mode of transport. The result from the route service provider will include the route summary that contains the duration, length, and route geometry, i.e., the set of coordinates that graphically represents the determined route and the turn-by-turn -turn route instructions. Now, let's discuss the important classes and interfaces used for the route service. iRoute Service Provider is the main interface and it represents the route service provider. Through this interface, applications request route-related services from the route service provider. The GetRoute API is used to request the route from the route service provider. It's an asynchronous method and the result will be received through the listener, I route service listener. To cancel the get route request, we can use the cancel request API. The route service preferences class captures the preferences related to route service providers. This class encapsulates the preferences that are used when requesting routing services from a service provider. As discussed earlier, the preferences may include the type of the route, the transport mode used to travel the route, and the areas and features to be avoided when calculating the route. Let's check the APIs to be used for these purposes. You can set the maximum number of matches returned from the route service provider using the Set Max Matches Count API. You can avoid unwanted areas and addresses using the Set Areas to Avoid, Set Addresses to Avoid, and Set Free Form Addresses to Avoid APIs. The Set Features to Avoid API sets the features to be avoided when generating the route. These features can be toll roads and bridges. Using the Set Transport Mode API, you can set the transport mode to be used 
when generating the route. Possible transport mode values can be retrieved with the Provider Capabilities Get Property Value method using Provider Capabilities Route underscore supported underscore transport underscore modes as the property key. You can use the set route type method to set the route type to be used when generating the route. Possible route type values can be retrieved with the provider capabilities get property value method using provider capabilities route underscore supported underscore route underscore types as the property key. iRoute Service Listener is the listener used in the route service. Applications implement this interface and register it in the service request in iRoute Service Provider to obtain the search results from the service provider. The only method available in this listener is the on route received n method, which is called by the route service provider when the requested route has been calculated by the get route method. Let's discuss the third and last namespace, the location controls. The location control namespace contains classes and interfaces to allow users to control the map easily. It provides various functionalities to render the map using the concept of layers, deals with user input such as zooming, panning, moving markers, and displaying my location, as well as handling overlays. Applications can draw some additional information about places or map features using info window. From SDK 2.0 onwards, we support the map rotation and prefetch operations. Let's discuss each concept in detail. First, let's look at the rendering map in layers. The map control can render maps using the concept of layers. Rendering the maps is completed by drawing each layer step by step. There are five types of layers for rendering different kinds of information. Maps, Overlays, My Location, Info Windows, and Zoom Controls. The map is the bottommost layer, and a control is the topmost layer. Let's start with the basic sample code of how to draw a map. For getting the map, registering with Decarta is required since Decarta is the service provider for BADA locations. Therefore, in order to connect to the service provider, authentication, which consists of the client name and client password, is required. The Connect to Service Provider N API connects to the service provider with the parameter's name, the type of services, and additional information, such as the username and password received from Decarta for the authentication to use the Decarta services. The name of the provider is optional. If nothing is given, the default service provider, i.e. Decarta, is used. When calling the Connect to Service Provider N API, the service provider object is returned as a return value. Now, the map instance is created and constructed with parameters. The rectangular area is used for showing the map. The provider pointer is stored from the return value of connect to service provider n, and the boolean variable is used to enable map rotation. Then, the center of the map is set using the setCenter method. After setting the center of the map, the zoom level is set using the set zoom level method. For listening to any events, such as touch events, the add touch event listener method should be called with the listener name as the parameter. Finally, the map class is added to the control using the 
Add Control API. After adding the control, the Draw and Show methods should be called to show the map in the UI. And in the catch, the pointers are deleted to free the memory. Let's look at how to handle the overlays. Overlays are objects on the map that are tied to the latitude and longitude coordinates. That is, they're used for drawing shapes such as rectangles, circles, polylines, polygons, icons or markers, or custom objects including their shadows on the map. The overlay layer provides event handlers for shapes and markers, and you can add interactivity such as moving the markers by dragging them. Native Map Overlay is the class which provides methods to create overlays which are rendered on a map. All overlays must inherit this class to work as an overlay on the map. We can use the Set Extra Info and Get Extra Info methods to set and get user information about an overlay. The Set Highlighted method can be used to highlight an overlay, and the Is Highlighted method can be used to check whether the overlay is highlighted. The Set Priority and Get Priority methods set and get the priority of the overlay. And to set and get the Z order of the overlay, we can use the Set Z order and Get Z order methods. There are three types of native overlays shapes, polylines, and markers. Shapes are used to provide interactive capability to map overlay layers. You can create rectangles using the OSP Locations Controls Map Overlay Rectangle class. Circles using the OSP Locations Controls Map Overlay Circle class and polygons using the OSP Locations Controls Map Overlay Polygon class. Polylines using the OSP Locations Controls Map Overlay Polyline class are used to display polyline overlays. Markers, for example, Map Overlay Marker, are used in much the same way as colored pins are used on physical maps. For example, you can place markers on the map and display an information window when they're clicked. Now, let's look at the sample code to add a map overlay. This will give a clear picture on how to add a map overlay. There are many overlays supported by BADA, such as Map Overlay Polygons, Map Overlay Circles, Map Overlay Polylines, etc. Let's look at how to add a Map Overlay Polygon. Here, I'm just going to explain how to add a Map Overlay as we already learned about the Map Rendering part earlier. First, let's create an object of the Map Overlay Polygon. For drawing the polygon, the coordinates should be set. Set the four coordinates. Then, add the coordinates to the array list. The array will be added to the geographical polygon area. Now, construct the map overlay polygon with the polygon geographical area as an input parameter. A listener can be added for any events using the API Add Map Overlay Event Listener. Let's look at handling the info window. The info window can be used to describe some additional information about places or map features on the map. An info window consists of an info window image box, a title area, a content area, and a close button. Users can draw both native or predefined info windows and custom info windows on the map. For custom info windows, you can draw your content directly onto the canvas. In this case, the Draw Content method is used to render the specific info window on the map. With a native info window, 
i.e., Native, Map, Info window, you can set the title, set or draw the content such as text or bitmaps, open the information window, and finally, draw and display the map on the canvas. The main APIs used for this are Set Content to set the content, Set Coordinates to set the coordinates, and Set Title to set the title of the info window. Next, let's look at how to display My Location. My Location can be displayed on the My Location layer. My Location displays the current point to indicate the position on the map and circular bounds to represent the margin of error for the position. The current location information is updated on a regular basis. You can use the Move to My Location API of the Map class to move the center of a map to the current location. Let's look at handling user input on the map. For handling user input on the map, the Map class provides methods for processing user input, such as zooming or panning the map. Pan is the API which pans the map in a specified direction. Application developers can give the amount of pixels to be panned. The Set Zoom Enabled API can be used to set the zoom level of the map. This API can be used to increase or decrease the zoom level based on the application requirement. The Set Zoom Enabled API enables or disables zooming in a map and can be checked with the Is Zoom Enabled API. And the zoom level can be retrieved using the Get Zoom Level method. Similarly, Set Pan Enabled can be used to enable or disable panning, and it can be checked with the Is Pan Enabled API. Let's look at the map rotation, which is introduced in SDK 2.0. Map rotation is a feature in which the user can rotate the map with respect to true north, either in the clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. The map rotation feature can be enabled by passing true as the last parameter in the map construct. You can use the map rotate API to rotate the map according to a specified azimuth value. During the rotation of the map, all the overlays, markers, my location icon, and info window drawn on the map are kept intact with respect to the rotated map without changing their coordinates. Let's look at the map rotation sample code for better understanding of this feature. In order to enable the map rotation while constructing the map, the third parameter is passed as true. For rotating the map, the rotate method should be used with the azimuth, i.e., the angle of the map is to be rotated and the boolean variable to enable or disable the effect. The map prefetch feature allows the user to download a map with a size bigger than the actual screen size. This enhances the user experience while zooming and panning by avoiding the display of gray areas. The map prefetch feature is not enabled by default. The set prefetch margin API of the map class is used to set the prefetch margin. We've reached the end of the session. Let's summarize what we've discussed. Locations Namespace provides plenty of features related to location. The location provider yields the current location and landmark store is the set of interesting locations. Location Services gives the features like geocoding provider to convert addresses to coordinates, directory provider to search locations in a user-friendly manner, and route provider for automatic navigation. The map control contains classes and interfaces to allow the users to control the map easily.